All right, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. This is your Mountain State Update for August 6th, 2017, your Sunday political sermon right here on WTSQ 88.1 LP. You can keep up with the show throughout the week on Twitter at Mountain State Up, and you can subscribe to the YouTube channel to catch up on old episodes and find other stuff that I feel like throwing on there. I'm John Cantese, and today I'm joined by the man, the myth, the legend, the public news correspondent, Dan Hyman. And Mike Pushkin just came in. Oh, yeah, Mike Pushkin. How's it going? Delegate Mike Pushkin, and uh, also the uh, Face Off Season 2 finalist and local activist and human man, that's human me. man, He's Robert R.J. That'd be me. We, we will vouch for the fact that he is a human man. He is. Last uh, time I checked. Yeah. Mike, how's your, uh, Mike, how's your mic? Well, you tell me you're behind the border oh, over there, John. Looks am good I, to me. Am I on? Can you guys hear me? Sounds like radio you're there. Man. All right. All right. Looks like we're good. All right. So, a lot to talk about this week. Um, obviously, the first thing, the thing that really jumps out to everybody in this good old state of West Virginia here is the fact that Jim Justice has switched parties again, just to keep in mind, keep everybody uh, up to date here. This is not the first time uh, he was a Republican shortly before he ran. And then he was a Democrat while he ran. And then he got about a million dollars from the Democratic Party, ran one million dollars. Now he's a, uh, yeah, I mean, they, uh, they, <sighs> to keep it in perspective, Republicans got about three million or so. So yeah, but still that's a, lot a lot of money, money wasted there. It's not the party that that contributes the money. It's Democratic donors. Yeah, Democrat donors. Sure. yeah. So he basically stole a million what, dollars from the Democrats people who would normally state. wouldn't give to a Republican uh, help to help them get elected. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's I think, uh, I think that's it's one reprehensible. Of the, that's one it's of disgusting. The, uh, yeah. That's so one of the issues. Mike, um, well, I want to get your take first. And that's money that could have gone to delegates like Mike Pushkin. Right. And could have gotten helped elected. Could have got a lot of places. Could've, well, I, no, I the, won anyway. So this, right. This you, <laughs> you did. That's true. You did. But there yeah. were there were no, there was a lot of races with, that were tight that we we could have uh, you know could have resources could have been spent differently. But that, that's all. I'm not you know. I want to get your I take don't on go this. Replay um, the election. Uh, sure. like, there's a lot of different perspectives on that. There's a lot. I mean, the question is, could I mean this is a legitimate question. Could any have could we have won with any other Democrat? In that's this, a very good in this question. current political climate where we had. Where we're still the the state where Trump is the most popular, we basically had a Democrat uh, quote unquote Democratic Trump running for right. governor, and right. that's well, you know that's one of the reasons why he won the general election. So that's that needs to be out there too, but that's not really what I came to talk about. Today. Sure, yeah, I want to hear your um, your take on this, and um, <clears throat> yeah, I think you know, we all do. You're you're in there and. You know, you're surrounded by all this stuff. Well, and how do you, you feel about this? First yeah, I just walked in two seconds ago because I just got sure. off the road on a camping trip. So obviously, either I really, really like you guys, or I, or I had something that I really want to talk about. <laughs> I'd say it's a little bit of both. Let's say a little I, bit I of like, both. I like you guys. The, but, the dogs, uh, my dogs are here, and they're glad to see Mike. Yes. Well, they could probably smell that I've just been camping too. Hey, dogs. Anyway, um, the, the the reason that 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 the governor put out there of why he switched, he had this this you know nice little story that he told. To the Trump yeah. crowd in Huntington about being left at the altar by the Democrats in the legislature, and he was mainly talking about the Democrats in the House who who didn't we couldn't get behind his uh, his revenue bill, his tax bill, and and it wasn't because obviously I mean it, obviously we were the ones putting party or putting the people and putting the state ahead of the party. It would been a much easier just to go along with the quote unquote head of your party who is right. pushing this this revenue right. bill. But we really looked at the numbers, and first of all, uh, it's not whether it's a Republican idea or a Democratic idea, but when you're, when you're raising the consumption tax to pay for, to offset a, a, a reduction in the income tax, well, who benefits the most from the reduction of the income tax? Right. The wealthiest 1%, folks like Jim Justice. That's not a, necessarily a, a Democratic, uh, that's not a, a populist uh, uh, idea. Right. Okay, that's what we couldn't get behind. And to top it off, the worst part is if you look through the numbers, they simply didn't add up. I mean, we would have been bankrupting this state. We would be going down the same road as Kansas and Oklahoma. Big difference is when Kansas went down that path, they were actually in a surplus. Uh, now they are so far in debt that they just actually raised their income tax over the past. They, um, the, 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 uh, a Republican-led legislature in Kansas just recently had to raise income tax, which is a tough thing to do. 
especially for Republicans something yeah, in Kansas. very hard for them to do. And they overrode the veto of Governor Brownbeck, whose brilliant idea it was in the first place. Yeah. So we we look at this and we think that's a good idea for this state that's currently already in debt. We're not starting off it with a with a surplus. We're starting off in a hole. And the governor's like, hey, I got an idea, kids. Let's dig deeper. Well, we, we put the brakes on that. So it wasn't about party. It wasn't about personality. Nothing like that. It was just it was a bad idea, and we didn't vote for it. And, and the, I won't apologize the Democrats, for that. The Democrats, that, the thing that astonished me about what he said, about what Jim Justice said, is that the Democrats weren't the ones who really defeated that. We can't if, – if we could – if we were that – had that many numbers, we would have defeated right to work. We would yeah. have defeated the repeal of prevailing wage. We would have de- defeated all those bills. My first year up there, when they when they went after the people's mm-hmm. rights to the, uh, their, uh, a trial by jury, uh, right, or to go to or to organize. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is. I mean, yeah. There's there are there are 36 of us in the house. Right. So you're gonna blame. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, Mike. He said uh, when he announced that he was switching parties, and mm-hmm. he said it before that Democrats supported this. At one point, and then they changed their minds. Well, there what, were what does, what's, there what were does he mean a by lot that? of Democrats. I'm going to in- interject here sure. uh, before Mike gets a chance to talk about this. There were a lot of Democrats who I talked to, and Mike may have been one of these. I don't remember, but but there were a lot of Democrats, especially in the House, who said we really wanted to support our governor. We really wanted to support a Democratic proposal, a Democratic governor, and when, and when Justice went up there, his initial proposals, his tax and revenue proposals, initially there were a couple of two, three versions of that. So there were some pretty good things in there. Yeah, it funded, it fully funded a lot of a lot of programs that would have helped you. There were a lot of things in there we liked. We didn't like the way it went about right. raising the revenue on working people. Right. To give a break, and I, I can't justify giving a tax break to millionaires when I'm when we're raising taxes. Well, on initially, working people. initially, that was the initially, everybody took took a haircut, as I recall. Everybody was, you know, the 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 higher income folks paid a uh, a, a small. You know, increase. There was an increase in, in consumption taxes, mm-hmm. and over the process of the uh, the legislative session, especially mm-hmm. under the influence of the the Senate leadership in the in you know Republican leadership, Mitch Carmichael he, and folks, yeah. he's mis- mm-hmm. he's misrepresented, and that's a nice way to put it. He has misrepresented the truth about yeah. what really happened. That's why I came down here after. And the folks the who left him at the altar. Were in he, fact primarily the Republicans in the House. No, nobody, no, nobody was left at the altar. He changed the plan every couple of days. Yeah, and it's hard to get numbers when you're talking about. It, that's a pretty serious piece of legislation, there. Okay, when you, we're getting the numbers, and they, in, in out years, it would have broke the state. And he had in his own his own admin, you know, people had numbers out there where um, they had line items in like year uh, 2020. Hmm. For economic growth at like you know, you know, two hundred million for economic growth. Right. It's I, I mean, just non. You know, it's I'm just not nonsense. much of a gambler, but that's in Vegas they call that betting on the come. Okay. So, yeah. You're so, betting on yourself. It's gibberish. Yeah. So he said that Democrats supported it at first, and then when it came time to vote on it, that 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 they left him at the altar. And what you're saying is he actually changed. He changed what the, the agreement was yeah. multiple times, and yes. that's why people went away. And, and in and fact, because it's just not a good. You. It wasn't a. It, it wasn't fiscally sound. It and was that's, not a fiscally and that's sound why proposal. People like so Tim Armstead. If, if, if somebody it. wants to play play partisan, saying we were being partisan, no, we went up against the quote unquote leader of our party in this state, right. And said no, this is a bad idea. That's yeah. putting ideas first that's putting the people first that's not being playing partisan that's the exact opposite of being well partisan. it was just i mean it was uh it got worse and worse as i remember that during the session this plan just got worse and worse every day i would open yeah. up the newspaper or i would talk to somebody and it would just get because it was a short-term gain in in return for putting a bad tax structure in place yeah. that would have lasted for well, years. Well, we agree with we want you know we want to fund the programs that help people. We want to, uh, f- uh, the programs that help seniors, the programs that help help show the education college students. That's you know the, we're Democrats. We were ready to support all that. It was the way that you got there that really would have put the state in a bind in a couple of years. Yeah, it was purely um, a responsible. Now thing there's to some do. other things that he said uh, that are just completely untrue. 
uh, uh, Bush said that we walked away from the, or we, you know, we could have, what did he say? We could have eradicated the drug problem in this state if we would have passed that bill. Mm. First of all, that is an insult to people who work on the front lines and uh, work in drug treatment centers, work with addicts, work in prevention, even people who work in law enforcement. That's an that's a insult to them. Nobody has ever talked about eradicating the drug. You're not going to do that. Okay. Right. Now we could, uh, we could work on it. We could curb it. We could do what we can to alleviate it. But guess what? That money was never in the bill. Never in the bill. So that was just a straight so falsehood. He, he just made that up. He just made that up. Okay. And he, now he was saying that during the special session. And we would ask every time we had a private meeting with them, uh, is the money for drug treatment there? Uh, he'd, you know, check with his people. No, it was never there. It wasn't in that bill. Yeah. So, I mean, he's just... Well, I, I guess I, it's. I guess we're in the post-truth era now that we have President yeah, Trump, absolutely. and you can just say whatever, well, I mean, whatever this, you want. But that's this, that, the this truth is wasn't there. This lingering idea, and Paul Krugman calls this zombie economics. You know, it was originally voodoo economics. Mm -hmm. Now we have the child of the voodoo is the zombie, mm -hmm. right? Zombie economics. It's an idea that just refuses to die. Mm -hmm. That you can cut taxes, and this will increase revenue. Now, this is, I mean, when you just say it like that, it's just, it's on the face of it, it's ludicrous. But the idea is, is that you cut taxes, you get more economic growth, and, and as a result of that more economic growth, you get more revenues for the government. Mm -hmm. And right? let's see where that has worked. Well, exactly. I mean, and this is what Brownback in Kansas, and this is the point that you and that Ted went down there, Ted Bettner at the, you know, the Center on uh, West Virginia Center on Budget and Policy mm -hmm. went down there and they said this has never worked. This has never worked. This has always turned out badly. They tried it in Kansas. They tried it in Oklahoma. They did the exact opposite thing in Minnesota, and they actually put a 2% increase on high-end earners. Mm -hmm. And the result in Minnesota was a creation of 50,000 jobs mm -hmm. in one single year when job creation in Kansas was lagging badly behind its neighbors they were creating jobs hand over fist in Minnesota after increasing taxes. And, and this is so this zombie idea, somehow Jim Justice, I guess because he is this sort of post-partisan, not really a Democrat, not really a Republican. It's persona. called not having principles is what it is. <laughs> if party's not important, I get that. But there are principles to go. There's a reason why I'm a Democrat. Right. Yeah. Okay? It's because I subscribe to a certain amount of principles. Well, yeah, here's, and there's people who are Republicans. They have different principles. I'm not saying that one's the, right or one's wrong, but that's what it's about. Principles if, are if, supposed if you to lead you to You don't have any principles. I guess you can right. switch back and forth like it's right. the Yankees versus the Red Sox. Right. That's yeah. not how it is. Yeah, yeah. But there, here's the question, and I'll open this up to RJ and 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 Mike. And actually, I'm going to be reporting on this for the West Virginia News Service. I'll have a story about this Monday, and you can find my stories at. Uh, PNS. It's publicnewsservice.org. Public yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can find my stuff there. So my bosses love it when I plug the material. Yeah. But anyway, um, it's about what do we do now? Progressives, liberals, uh, you know, the folks who have really been uh, shut out. I mean, maybe sometimes we've been called the Democratic wing of the Democratic Party. I was never, I was not a, you know, a big Bernie backer. I know. Uh, uh, Mike and, 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 and John were, um, I mean, I was, a. I mean, I liked the guy, I would have voted for him, but, um, you know, but, but what does the democratic party in West Virginia do now? That's a big question. Well, it looks to me like dumping a million dollars into people who don't, um, people who are in trouble for pay, not paying their fair share of taxes, billionaires, uh, center right people who have center right principles that seems to not be working. Because you just lose. I'm just. I'm just. If you sick play the same game, the Republicans held hostage play, by lose. these rich SOBs. I mean, it really feels like that's what the the common man has to deal with. We're right. being held hostage by these SOBs that have all the money and the power and run. They Isn't buy it weird all that the, the elections. richest person in the state becomes they buy the all governor. the elections. This is exactly the. It, it's it's exactly the, by the mansion machine. Maybe. Right. I mean, we don't really know. But. We don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think they're very close at the moment. <laughs> well, I suspect not. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, no, I mean, this is definitely, I mean, RJ's got a point here is, is that they've been, I mean, the, 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 the 
constituents, the voters, and I have to hold the voters responsible for this for a certain degree because we saw it in Trump, we saw it in we saw it in justice that you have these guys who come forward and say, "I'm successful in my private life. I made a ton of money, and boy, I can you know it's like the the snake oil salesman who wears the fancy right. suit. You know, mm-hmm. I can, and that applies much more I, to Donald that's, Trump. That thing transcends that, party that that mentality. There's obviously, just a, right? I think there's just a, a general stupidity. I mean, I really, I mean, I'm just going to be very blunt at this point. I just think there's a lot of stupidity out well, there. Well, people are trained to, to to be foolish. I mean, they don't they don't become foolish on their own. They, you know, people people. You I think know, they're more they're, desperate than they are foolish. Desperate is a good. I think word. that's what it is. I think Des- that desperation leads you to uh, do things that might not desperate normally things. seem logical. And I think people, especially in this state, America, all over, obviously, but in this state, there's a concentrated amount of desperate. People who are willing to roll the dice with something, then continue with a system that has failed them. The success, and that's why of, you see justice. The success of con men like Donald Trump, and I don't think Jim Justice is really a con man. I wouldn't put him in that category. Um, but I've been in a room with him when he's been trying to sell me something. I was getting ready to say, and, and, uh, really, I think he's I'm a like... pretty good salesman. <laughs> oh, I'm and, sure. And what and what he was saying was not entirely true. So I would yeah. say that that falls under the realm of con artists. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, well, he definitely conned us. Let's put it that way. I mean, he, he didn't con me. I voted Mountain Party. Well, I, I, if you, you go talk to some, uh, some uh, you, there's I some sure Russians did. who are in the coal business that might disagree with the whole con artist thing because <laughs> well, <laughs> well sure. he got the better of them. He's just I, a representative. We can, we can talk Booth's about we can talk about that separately, but. But I mean, the um, yeah, the president was up on the stage like, "Have you seen any Russians in West Virginia?" First thing that came to my mind, well, there were the ones that bought that the coal. Yeah, that, uh, I do wanna, I, 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 there you go. The ones that bought the talk, coal. I do want to talk. There's a there's a a conspiracy notion around that that I've heard expressed, which is some people think that Jim Justice was bought off by the Russians, and I I want to put. Put paid to I'm that. not gonna. I'm not. You know what? I'm I haven't gonna, heard that. Really? I'm not gonna further yeah. any. I can tell you what I know. You know what I know to be true, and that's from what went on at the Capitol. Just that there were certain uh, well, misrepresentations of the truth that have been going on from the governor. Um, well, nobody I just want to talk left, about the Russian know. thing for yeah, a second I know, but because but I want Weiss, of Weiss, which party? I thought well, I'll tell you one thing that uh, I mean the day that he that we have this rally and he does that is also you know the same day. That uh, we find out that you know the investigator Mueller has has put together a federal grand jury, which yeah, is but pretty that's serious at the business. Level. That's at that's the pretty well. What level. tells me is that the governor might be uh, hitching his wagon to well, to and, a, and I agree with that. Party. I think that's a stupid to use something he might. Say. <laughs> I mean, to, well, you yeah. know, this is. Uh, I mean, Donald Trump is one third of the voters now. Approve of Donald Trump's. Well, that's what job. I couldn't understand. I just, why in God's why name people are jumping ship from the Republican Party and the independents are leaving Donald Trump support behind, and he goes and does this? Well, because this his, if you, no the sense. numbers that have come out recently, he's actually he's his popularity has grown in West Virginia. Oh, I'm sure Trump's Trump's, Trump's yes, numbers yes, have grown. Yeah, his numbers in West have gone Virginia. Well, at least in the short. Go. But I want to I want to finish talking for a moment about the uh, about the, the the Russian story because. This this Russian company, this Russian coal company, mm-hmm. Metal, has been in West Virginia for a long time. This is they didn't just come in and put a you know a, a big wad of money in in Jim Justice's pocket. They've they've been players for a while, and I have seen no evidence connecting them to anything that Donald Trump no. does. So I mean I I just want to put I I don't I, that story may there may be something to that story but I have not seen any evidence and I've looked I haven't even heard of yeah, that yeah, yeah. So, there's that's so, just people just you know, people talking yeah yeah that's just, like just say, we're in talking. the we're in the post but you know it, but it goes era, back to again it goes back right. to again being held hostage by yeah. a dying industry this entire state is held hostage by the for the twenty thousand jobs that it provides when they're so many other industries Not again, like films. like the film, like the film commission, right? Gets they they just can the film commission because of, of of what? Why? Why? Right. But the popularity of you know, and and my and John's point about desperation, I think, is uh, is a good one because people get conned by con artists when they're desperate. The con artist is kind of like an opportunistic infection. And we've been taught for so long that you know the 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 the, the left is corrupt and that it's you know 
you know, in the anti-American and anti-Christian, and um, you know, the coal industry. To talk about you know be holding us hostage, the coal industry has um, has done such an effective job of slandering any other political well, stand. Everywhere you turn in this state. Okay, they have, they, have, they have waged one of the most successful PR campaigns that we've ever seen. And it was before President Obama was elected president. You had this PR campaign. Where they have spent millions and millions of dollars every right. year telling right. you this is your right. way of life. But yeah. it shouldn't this be is your way of those life. attacks. And that's why land. a coal baron. So should anybody be surprised that the, you know, a, a lot of Democrats, a lot of primary voters felt that their best chance to win in the general election was to have a billionaire coal baron right. as the face of their party. Right. And guess so what? what it it worked. He won. Right. He's just not a Democrat. Yeah. Right. What do we do now? <laughs> and he never what really do we I don't think he really was. He never was. Where do we do? What do we, where do we go going forward? I mean, how we, do we, we get We get out good of this? candidates who, who will work their butts off to win. We have elections here. That's why I get, I do get a little bit upset when people say, well, you know, the Democratic Party did that, the Democratic Party. Voters decide who wins primaries, and voters decide who wins general elections. Okay, when I first decided to run, I wasn't recruited by a party. I wasn't recruited by by labor. I wasn't recruited by any. I mean, I was. Yeah, I, I ran, and uh, you know, I, I knocked on a lot of doors. Were, I talked to a lot of people, and I made those. Focused. And I made and other thing that we I had to make those uncomfortable phone calls where you uh, raise money in order to get your message out. And it, those are necessary uh, things that have to be done to win elections. And that's why, you know, we have a lot of progressive candidates. Democrats need, need, need to stand need, for we, something. We need progressives who will get out there and win. They need to stand for something, and they need to communicate it like Republicans communicate it. This is a very fundamental thing that the whole time I've been paying attention to politics, local and uh, national level, Democrats are the worst salesmen of good ideas, and Republicans are the best salesmen of bad ideas. That's what's been happening this whole time. This is why Republicans win when they have – they should not be – and this is why corporate Democrats win in primaries when you should, when, when they're up against relatively uh, honest progressive well, Democrats. Right. You know, they're, How do you they're, explain the 2012 presidential primary in West Virginia where uh, I don't know. Heath Judd gets 40-some percent of the vote then? Because <laughs> a lot of people in West Virginia didn't like Obama. I guess exactly. I don't but know. It wasn't like there was a bunch of money put into the Keith Judd campaign. No, That's there wasn't. True. It was because That's the true. state. I mean, because we have had this there was this PR, money this put PR into campaign of, that of has been Barack waged Obama. in this state. I mean, there was just, and that has a lot to do with some, with a lot of the losses uh, from Democrats in this state. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I do. I mean, feel Nick Rayhall. Like, Nick Rayhall was a good example. I feel mm -hmm. like. He, I don't think he was a bad guy. I think from what, if you look into it, if you go into the weeds and you see what he did, he has a good body of work. He has a good legacy, right. but it didn't translate in like in people's faces. You know, you still go to you go to he Nick Rayhall's district. Was an early super delegate. For, there were people for burning Obama their trash in, in their yards. There were people burning trash that. in their yards in Nick Rayhall's district because because garbage people can't because there's no garbage men to come take their uh, trash away. You know, like that's what affects them. That's what they see every yeah, day. That's could, what they do. You with. could blame that. Not everybody's going to dig into blame the that on the coal industry. The coal industry that's made you know uh, the Massey family you know millions of dollars living in Richmond, Virginia. It's made Arch Coal, Arch of uh, you know of 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 St. Louis, the St. Louis Arch. Uh, made them millions of dollars, you know, Peabody Coal. You know, it's it, it's that may it, be true, but he didn't. Com that's that wasn't communicated. That's what I'm saying. He didn't communicate that. Democrats, they give you this, especially lately, you know, in 2016 is a good example. They give you these generic things where they say, vote for us. We're not them. We're going to break down the barriers. You know, all this generic stuff that means nothing. It doesn't do anything for the guy that has to burn no. his trash in his yard. I'll, uh, you know? I know in this state, I can just speak about uh, Get the, the, way, the way the party has done things in this state. For so long, this state was dominated by the Democratic Party that right. a lot of people who have been there a long time got right. complacent and really don't know how. Don't know don't how, know how to, to connect. They don't know how not. They don't know how to win elections. I mean, if you uh, you know well, earned your chops, hear, you know, working working for, on Bird or Rockefeller campaigns, those guys didn't have really really Look, tough elections once they got in there for a well, while. Well, those guys, yeah. you know, what the Republicans love to say is, well, you know, the uh, the Democratic the Democrats controlled West Virginia for seventy plus years or whatever. And look it was, where we and are. Look where we are. That's right. their that's their only argument that they have. Well, which you is guys a bad argument had, when the other side has nothing. My to argument. Well, they've had it. Argument. They've not done been able to do much with it since they've had it, except oh, except, except make it a lot worse. Budget. 
Yeah. No, right. it's two not years, about one party being. Of, uh, what the problem is, failure. one industry's been in control of the state for the yeah, past that, hundred. Yeah, right. And that's why we're exactly. it doesn't have, and, and, and whichever party's going is is have, is in charge, well, that industry is going to uh, pay for a lot of campaigns to, to make and sure. And people that like people like protect. you, Mike and um, Adam Kessler. You know, people need to break away from that. They need. Jeff, you know, if, Jeff. Or Jeff yeah. Kessler. Sorry, but if you if you make if you play the same game that the Republicans play. You get the same donors. You say the same crap. You're going to lose because they actually believe it. Somebody and people know that. Somebody pointed out that for years, the governor of the state of West Virginia has been financially back. You know, their financial background has been in the energy industry. Now I don't remember Tomlin. I I suspect he probably has had some coal uh, industry was insurance. Yeah, but he was originally. But then of course, well, rain had, machines yeah. and everything. Yeah. But but, but you know, before it was Jim Justice, and then before Tomlin was Manchin, Manchin's family was uh, land, and they did a lot of natural gas work. Um, and they were landmen, and, the, you know, and then they did a bunch of other stuff in, in Marion County. Oh. But, uh, and then before Manchin, it was, uh, it was what? It was uh, Wise. Wise. Mm-hmm. And he was a coal executive. And then before Wise was Underwood, Underwood and mm-hmm. he was a coal executive. And before Underwood was Gas Cap. And Cape, Caperton was a coal man, and before Caperton was I don't Moore, know. That's uh, as far back Arch as I go. Moore. Arch Moore. Okay. Uh, well, if you go took, back to uh, one of my favorite governors, Marland, Marland. Who, who did come from that background, and he was put in there by the coal companies. Right. And then he got in there, and he looked Turned at the around books, and, and stabbed he, him in the back. He, he got in there within days, said, we're going to have to raise the severance tax on coal. And what happened to him? He wound up driving a cab in Chicago. Yeah, and, and and as a result, we have Mike Mike Pushkin who drives a cab in Charleston. Hey, is now one of the smarter right. people in the in the tr- in right. the West Virginia well, legislature. I appreciate that, but yeah, it was a it was that was a late uh, in life career change for Governor Marlin. Uh, yeah, it, it was. was. I right. did it fairly early in life. Well, he it, they turned different. him, they <laughs> ground him down. I mean, they really well, destroyed the, the him. story. He had a drinking problem, and and, and energy lobbyists were sending him bottles of vodka. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, and then of course they would publicize that that yeah. once he yeah. you they know, they once destroyed he his character because he got in there and turned his back on the people who brought him there. Well, and Jay Rockefeller, he was defeated because he wanted to enforce a, uh, a surface mining. Law. Yeah, the first time he ran, he was uh, more of an environmentalist, and it, it didn't I, do. Well. And I mean, he had an energy background distantly. If you want to look at you know Rockefeller Senior, but but. Um, I mean, it w- he was probably the last one who wasn't a coal executive. Uh, he was the black until... sheep of that family. He was a Democrat. Well, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know, we can keep, you know, the thing of it is, is we can keep trying to revive a dead horse, but all these other co- uh, countries like Asia and France and, and all these, uh, China, Japan, and all these people are going to start this green technology stuff. China's this already boom, doing it. Yeah. And, and we're going to be left in the dirt. That's what I'm concerned uh, about. There's, there's a market for the, uh, the metallurgical coals coming back. It's not they're not burning it. It's used to make steel. There's right. always going to be a need for that. Right. Okay. Um, and and West Virginia, the Central Appalachian coal is good but for that. The, what successful states? What successful countries anywhere are totally reliant on one industry, no matter what that industry is? What, None. What's that's successful? A, that's a third. Exactly. That's what third world exactly. countries do. Right. That's it's. I mean, and it's that's a, the problem. I just like to see us really work on diversifying, diversify our, the our portfolio. Economy. I mean, and, that's what anybody does. Yeah. That's what any business. That's what any smart businessman does. That's what any smart state should do. That's what any smart country does. You don't just depend on one thing, mm-hmm. because right. obviously, if yeah. something happens, that one kill thing, other things really that so I mean, starting to, me, to take that's, off. Yeah, that's the problem. That's right. the problem. I agree. You've had one industry that has spent so much money on on a, on an ad campaign. Uh, basically saying anything that's not us is an attack on your way of life. Yep. And that's just wrong. And I, I mean, I'm def- I'm not anti, I'm not anti any industry. Yeah. I'm for more industry. I'm for a diverse economy where we have all different kinds of jobs and we're not that's putting all of our be. eggs in one basket. Well, that's the, the way smart states do it. The accusation has been, and I don't know whether this was more a sin of commission or a sin of omission. I don't know whether this was a conscious thing that the uh, the the resource industries in this state have done, but they've always the accusation has been that the the resource industries have always discouraged other kinds of economic development here. They have. I don't know if that's actively true, and maybe it just be passively that people have gotten used to doing it a certain way. And so, for example, if Tesla wants to come here 
or uh, you know somebody wants to come here and do things. Which Republicans a, fought? Republicans fought Tesla. Republicans fought Tesla. Well, and, uh, some yeah, of that they may killed have the film, had commis- to do, film commission, as Robert film said, which could have but potentially. They may have, uh, they may have, been a thing. You know, they may have killed a Tesla because their they don't want their leader was a used car dealer. But, exactly. but we right, don't, right, we don't exactly. really know. <laughs> but but the, the thing is, is that not the assumption has thing. been that we had a certain vision of economic progress. And that vision is 100 years out of date. Well, not 100 years, let's say 50 years out of date. And um, we, you know, we have a reluctance. It's, it's, it, change is always difficult, especially when you've been beaten about the head and ears. You know, if you've had a tough life and if you've been clobbered, it, t- it makes it tough to, to break away because you start to think, all that pain that I have invested in that miserable period is just going to waste. It's like the guys who, you know, their families um, are the ones who, you know, go over and fight in Iraq, mm. you know, or fight in Afghanistan, and they come back and they feel like if I say that we should pull out of those wars, then I'm betraying I'm, I'm all my buddies a who died. Right. You know? Um, it's, I, you know, Julia, Julie, Julia Bonds, uh, said that, that West Virginia is like, uh, a battered wife of the coal industry. Mm-hmm. And I, I, you know, I don't know if that's, I mean, that's pretty tough. I mean, that's saying that is pretty tough, but, but at a certain point we've got to leave him, you know, we've got to jump. Right. Um, and, and this is, uh, this is our time. I mean, maybe now is the chance. Maybe now is when we can do it. Um, I'd like to think that, you know, when people look at the Trump, I don't, I don't think Trump, uh, okay. So Trump's numbers have gone up in West Virginia. Maybe that has to do with the fact that we're exporting, you know, ec- coal exports have gone up 60%. Well, there, had, the Ukraine, there has believe, been right? some growth in the coal industry. There a few hundred some. jobs. Yeah. But there's been a few there hundred has been, jobs. There has been some growth and a lot of that does have to do with the re- relaxing of, of regulations, a lot of it, a lot of it's metallurgical and that doesn't have as much to do with that. But a lot of it, some Exporting of it does have to do. Yeah. And I mean, you got this is another thing. You remember, the, like, was the day after President Obama was sworn in? I think Bob Murray started shutting down mines. Yeah. A lot of that was political too. Oh, sure. It was. So when they they have a, a friend in the White House, they're more apt to like. Invest. Maybe maybe invest a little bit more. So now, as as demand for also. coal continues to go down. We'll see Being that cold. this these little these little short term gains don't matter, you know, because these jobs are just going to no, go away I'm, again. I'm not going to say natural I, it's gas, hard to say solar. These things are growing. Yeah. These it's things hard are to growing. say. Tell the, the guy that just got a, a, his job back that it doesn't matter. It does matter. It, it won't really matter does. in ten years when it's gone but again. It, but you're That's right. what I'm in, the, in the long run, it's, it's more, nice it's for an now. Upsurge in metallurgical coal in 2024. Uh, coal is never going to be back. Okay, uh, here's natural gas and solar. Here's the question. Here's the question. Okay. And this is the way I've put it for a long time. I've talked, I've put this question to a lot of people. So what is the democratic economic bumper sticker? What do we put on a bumper sticker that's going to tell people who we are and what we believe in? Well, for, ec- for economics, it should just be about diversity. And that's not a great bumper sticker, but give me some time to think about it. I'll have a think about it. Slogan think of, we'll think of, let's think about that. We got till 2018. I mean, hey, you know. Uh, we uh, got an election right coming up corner. next. Yeah, but it's time to start. It's time to start putting. You know, if if John is right and we haven't sold our philosophy, we haven't sold our agenda. How do we do that? Well, I don't know I, about I, a bumper sticker, but I know some very basic principles. Get health care to everybody, one way or another. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Get rid of corporate donors, and. Do what Bernie Sanders did. I know that it's a broken record to some people. I realize that. But that's, I mean, he energized people that didn't care about politics. Yeah. He brought independence over to the left. Hillary didn't do that. Nope. You know, get specific. Sure Be policy-oriented. Be Get no. very specific on policy. Talk about things that affect people. 61% of America right now wants Medicare for all. 61%. Yeah. What are yeah. we waiting for? Well, the Half the Republicans want it. The health care, this is part of what I mean when I say this may be our opportunity because the loss of the Republican health care proposal nationally has given a wide opening to the Democratic Party. What we saw... And in, there have to be gains. Oh, don't, go ahead. I didn't mean to cut well, you Well, but, but that's... I, got... I mean, we what we saw in West Virginia is that... 
uh, when that healthcare fight was going on, I know of people who were going out and they were holding town hall meetings mm -hmm. and forums and they were talking to people about this is what's at risk in this health care debate. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is you and your family. This is 170,000 West Virginians. Mm -hmm. This is people I've talked to again and again. I've talked about it on this show. I've talked to people who will tell you that the Affordable Care Act, as flawed as it is, has saved their lives. And Shelley yeah. still voted for it. And Shelley still voted right. for repealing it three out of four no. times, yeah. right? I can, Which I we talk about. about that. But, but the point is, is that they went out to the, to the ordinary people and they held these town halls and they told these people these stories and they, they listened to them and they discussed the options in a, in a, a practical way mm -hmm. and they converted people. There were Trump supporters who were calling Shelley Capito telling her, do not vote for repealing my health care. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. They blew well, her phones up. They blew her there, phones up. It was up. constant. And, good and we though. won. Right. And for, we won that For a fight. moment there, yeah, we did. I and mean, that's, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's it, amazing how powerful well, that can be. And, the, and the, the, the reason... Well, as the, long as they're in control, it's not over yet. They're gonna no, keep it's not over that. Because there are basic differences, and I, I get so... When people say there's no difference between... Uh, Republican and Democrat. Oh, and yeah. it's not, no, it's that not, kills me. We need more. <laughs> and this is why I'm a Democrat and why we need more Democrats in office. Having health care and not having health care exactly, is the same it's thing. A, it's about protecting people's health care. Most <laughs> right. people don't think that Americans should go bankrupt because right. they get Why should sick? I have to pay for his health care? I'm fine. I don't have no physical ailments. Well, I ain't paying for somebody that's sick. As long as you stay, keep your hands well, off a lot of people who are, uh, yeah, there are a whole lot of people keep who are. That's the mentality, keep your though. Robert's been reading keep comments. Your government hand, <laughs> keep your government hands off my medical yeah, What I'm getting at is there's one party that has continued to be a voice for for working people okay right. and, and if you see the end of that party which god help us if we do you won't have a voice i work up there in that building we can see from this window okay there's been one voice that has been standing saying that you know what that the protecting protecting workers rights protecting their safety you know a safe work environment saying if you get hurt on the job you you should be able to take your employer to court there's another party that's saying, no, you shouldn't, you know, we're going right. to restrict your right to your day in court. We don't care about your, your safety on the job. You can fend for yourself when it comes to health care. Right. It's it's basic I ideology behind these parties. They think that the, the that everything's always done better by the private sector. I can tell you, I just got off the road from camping. Now, here's an example. I've stayed at a state park. There's yeah. a lot of things that that that, that is not always done better by the well, private but, but sector. Well, but to get back to, we the, to where we go. Again. Okay. Did you want to finish Let's, the point? Yeah, well, I'll just say, you know, where do we go from now? I mean, because Trump is going to, is is trying, the minute they get into office, the Trump said he was a defender of working people, and one of the first things he tries to do is loosen coal mine safety rules. Right. The, the one of the he says he's a defender of working families. And one of the first things he tries to do is get, you know, throw them off of their health care. So so what do we do now that we have an opportunity and people are looking at this and seeing that that the promises are not what they this right. is not what they voted for. Maybe they still enamored of Trump in this state, but they're not going to be forever. So where right. do we go? I mean, that's, that's, that's the, the question. Open question. I, and all we really know for sure is that what we've been doing doesn't work. Shifting to the right does not work. Democrats are completely wiped out. Okay, so moving on here. We've got to shift. All right, uh, I'll, I'll see you all later. Gears. All right, Mike. <laughs> Mike, you leaving? You. Yeah, I got to go. All right, all right, Mike. Keep the fight. That was Mike pushing everybody. Keep the faith. Uh, okay, so we got to shift gears here. Uh, there is a, uh, yet another development. And uh, let's go to national uh, level here. Well, we kind of have the uh, <laughs> Yeah, but it's been intertwined with West Virginia, and now we're just going to go straight up uh, talking about the Trump administration. Scaramucci is out. The mooch. And um, I was just going to didn't last to, long, uh, did it? it no, it Ten days, which is, uh, as Stephen Colbert pointed out, not even one pay period. So he, <laughs> he's out. And um, it's interesting because... He did the Fandango. I was... I was, and, I was we, and we let him go. I felt like this guy is what Trump really wanted. Yeah, he oh, wanted yeah. he wanted someone to come in there and bully people around like you know like him like him and um, so how did how did this go down? Well, what happened was he got he, what also here's what happened. This is this is great when you look at it all as one big picture. Scaramucci came in. I guess him and Rance Priebus, the uh, chief of staff at the time, have some beef. I don't know what it is. 
Somebody, uh, somebody did something to somebody a long time ago because they they're hate each other. They're different individuals, and they're very different so philosophically. What happened, and right, um, and, and yeah. so yeah, and really, Priebus is kind of like the lifeline between the Trump administration and the establishment, right? Yeah. Okay, and Scaramucci is not. So they, uh, so they didn't work out. So Priebus left, and then uh, who else left? Somebody else left. Yeah, uh, well, Priebus was a was the big one. Well, of course. Spicer left. Spicer when, left. Spicer left bef- when Scaramucci right. was named. So of course, Spicer, Spicer left, was had so one foot out the door. Scaramucci already. came in, caused two people to leave, and then John Kelly came in and caused Scaramucci to leave. Yeah, which John is, Kelly so, got promoted to. So that's the a chief net loss staff. on the Scaramucci bet, as far as I uh, <laughs> as far as I can see it. Like that's a that's a big loss. You bet on this Scaramucci guy, you lost two people, and then and then when you get a new chief of staff, he gets rid of Scaramucci. Okay, which probably needed to happen because that was that was chaotic. I actually have a phone call here that um, scare Mochi, The whole thing uh, is chaotic. And, and, and just, oh, I, I want to hear. So, this. Did you not hear that yet? No. Let's listen to this and then we'll talk but, I mean, about. You were it saying here. you were saying this is just disorder at the at the White House. Yeah. Let's talk. Let's listen to this uh, phone call. That now this is Scaramucci trying to hunt down who's doing the leaks, right? right. Because that was kind of okay. his main objective. Who's doing the? Who's leaking all this stuff to the press? And so he's talking to somebody, I believe, from the Times. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that on Twitter. And um, yeah, let's listen to this because this was uh, tweet this us was, at, at Mountain State. This is fun. That to you. Oh man, I can't tell you that. Um, what do you mean? What's that? I can't tell you that. But okay, so I'm just gonna. What I'm gonna do is I'll, I will eliminate everybody in the comms team, and we'll start over. <laughs> so it's no problem. That's all. So I asked these guys not to leak anything, and they can't help themselves. So we'll limit everybody. So was somebody somebody in the comms team leaked that to you? Okay, but you're an American citizen. This is a major catastrophe for the American country. So so I'm asking you as an American patriot to give me a sense for a leak. All I, the only thing I can tell you is, is two people in the White House who I know wouldn't lie to me. You know what I mean? Uh, Come on, I can't, I can't tell you, buddy. You know I can't do that. So you, know, you, you can give me. Is it? A, is an assistant to the? Is it an assistant to the? Is it assistant to the president? And Ryan's is f-ing paranoid, schizophrenic, paranoiac. Oh, this is what he's going to do? Is, oh, yeah, maybe Bill Shine's coming. Or Let me leak the thing and see if I can block these people the way I block Scaramucci for six months. <laughs> Whoa! Okay, but, but he leaked the system yeah, stuff on me. On the uh, you know, my financial disclosures been leaked to Politico, yeah, which is a fi- which yeah, which is a felony. But I wanted no, to ask you if you wanted to be profiled. I don't. I don't want to be profiled. Well, just I'm what not you're Steve Bannon. What you're trying to do? I'm not. I'm not Steve Bannon. No. I'm not trying to suck my own. <laughs> I'm not trying to build my own brand off the train the president. <laughs> I'm wow. sure to serve the country. Yeah. We don't. Okay. The mood showed up a week ago. Me. This is going to get cleaned up very shortly. Okay, because <laughs> I nailed these guys. I got digital fingerprints on everything that they've done through the FBI and the <laughs> Department of Justice. What's so, it's no, <laughs> oh, well, the felony, they're going to get hilarious. prosecuted probably for the felony. They'll probably get prosecuted for that. Okay. Yeah. Wow. They lie detector stars. So he... Was they, it, wait, was that a tape or was that an episode of tape. Goodfellas? That, yeah, right, right. Yeah. I thought that was a clip from the movie Goodfellas. Yeah, it kind of is. Am or, I a clown to you? He's like a Goodfellas character on the Bob and Tom show. <laughs> like calling in, you know? That's what it made me think I, of. This is, I mean, this is one of the things that occurs to me, and this is definitely what occurred to me when I, when I saw how Scaramucci operated um, was that, yes, he was clearly, you know, what Trump wanted. I mean, there was somebody who did a hilarious thing where they compared video of Trump and video of Scaramucci, and they had the same hand gestures, right? Mm-hmm. The same New oh, yeah, York yeah, yeah, style, yeah. the same yeah, aggressive the same in your people. face um, crudity. Um, but the thing that struck me about Scaramucci is that he... He was he he really didn't know what he was doing for that position. He was really I don't I want to say he was out of his depth, but but that's not he may have been in his depth in Wall Street, right? But he was definitely in the wrong position because they he let that reporter record that call and put it on the record, right. and and that that's is, the striking thing. Like it's, it's like it's, he didn't care. He it's doesn't one care. Thing, it's one thing well, to talk to people that like that. He didn't care. Right. He, d- he, didn't, know, he didn't care that but he had to care. That's the problem with the entire administration. He's bringing in <laughs> right. too many people that really don't, don't know, know what, what the 
heck they are doing. Good job. Yeah. Good job. And that's the problem. Right. Yeah. I that's mean, the real problem. And then, yeah. for example, where he said that, uh, you know, it's, it, I, you know, somebody leaked my disclosure form and it's a felony. No, it's not. It's a publicly available document. Yes, you're right. right. I mean, it's, and then, and then he goes and then he's. Especially now that he's a public uh, servant, especially at that point. Yeah. And there was another case where he, he said that uh, it was a, it was a different instance where he went to a couple of reporters and he told them something, and then they, you know, that got out into the press because he told it to them. And then he comes back to some of the people who reported on it and said, "Who leaked this?" Well, you did. But the the, the point is, is that this is the, you know, this is another symptom of Trump administration disorder. Am- is this guy in a job that he has no business being? Exactly. In. So sick of hearing this term. Mo- uh, he's modern day presidential. No, what he is is crude, classless, a bully. It's disgusting, and it's not. It's not. It, it is not uh, what the office deserves. Right. It, it right. is. It is an embarrassment worldwide. Well, and if you don't think that. If you don't think that if there's something wrong in your brain that tells right. you that what he's doing and his character and his actions and are okay, picks, and then the there's something wrong with you. Well, if you think that that's okay, if you think that type of behavior is okay for the president, West then there, well, like then I'm on they're... the record as saying I think y'all have a problem. <laughs> y'all have y'all need to go get some medication, <laughs> just like Mr. President does. Well, right. uh, but but uh, okay, so <laughs> so what has happened is that a lot of people talk a about. Sassy there. Well, it's getting to me. I'm telling you. <laughs> I, I'm about fed up. I really am. <laughs> about had it. That's a phrase. Yeah, but they uh but but the 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 Trump administration um has been there's there's no centers of power, there's everybody out for themselves, it leaks like a sieve, it's a complete dis- So what he does in classic sort of Trump has this um, you know, affinity for military guys, these generals. Maybe right. it's because he went to a, a military school and then dodged and then dodged in, and, yeah, just, yeah, in they, they Vietnam. Dodged he likes, you know, he he likes toughness. To a, he went to a military academy, yeah. but he likes toughness. He likes tough guys, so he named this big bald-headed, you know, guy who shaves his head general to be his right. chief of staff to throw, you know, some order on this. Which mess. may have actually been a... Uh, finally, a good decision. Well, I think so, especially if he listens. How to did Kelly. those generals interact with someone they know dodged the draft? They and sh- they put they, their lives on the line for this country. And this man sitting in front of them telling them what to do dodged what I the think draft. They, what I think these guys How do, do process because that? I think that what the generals realize, because you don't get to be a multi-star general in the United States military Without being a successful politician, let's put that. Yeah, right. it's. I mean, it's a political. Thing. It's a very political within the military, thing, certainly. Yeah. So these guys sure. have the discipline and the 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 wherewithal, the perspicacity to know when to keep their mouths shut. That's a, yeah. So that's what you're seeing with Jim Mattis and you know General Kelly and General McFarland. So there's an interesting step to this, right? So y- this picture that you were drawing of. You know the Scaramucci saga, all right. ten days of it. Um, now Kelly comes in, and there's a. Um, Is the, she comm director now? Mike Kelly, the the or the, uh, the 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 chief of staff, General Kelly, the chief of staff comes right. in. He's chief of staff. He's chief of staff. Oh, sorry, I thought you were talking about Conway. Kelly and Conway. Kelly and Conway. No, yeah, no, yeah, no. Okay. Um, I don't know who's in. I think it's Kelly and Conway. I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, go ahead. But anyway, um, so General Kelly comes in. He starts to impose some order. Trump apparently, at least initially, is listening to him and, and taking his advice. And then you have a real Bannonite right-wing operative who was protected at the National Security Council. He was a Flynn appointee who really was an, a nasty piece of work. He was the guy who tried to... Uh, imply that um, former national security advisor under Obama, uh, Susan Rice, had uh, been treasonous because he she asked for uh, names to be revealed. It's a long story, but yeah, but he put forward a slander against her. He was the guy behind this. The the guy McFarland, who's now the head, took over at National Security Council after uh, Mike Flynn. 
um, has wanted to get rid of this guy for years. Well, not years, but for months, right? Finally, now that Mike, that that General Kelly is the chief of staff, he gets empowered to do this. So he gets rid of this guy, and then the Bannonites and all the hard right, the alt right uh, media empire, um, go after him. And they try to, you know, they try to say he's he doesn't, you know, he's not a true believer. He's mm-hmm. deep state. He's trying to undermine Trump. But but what we're seeing here is General Kelly, you know, trying to bring some order. And you know, at least initially, Trump is listening to him, and he's trying to get, you know, uh, the, the 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 he's trying to gather the threads of authority into his own hands as a chief of staff should do. Right. And everyone should have to go through him to the president. Well, that's the – or someone. I mean, there right. has to be a you gatekeeper it's not, It shouldn't be a free for yeah. Okay, so uh, let's shift gears. we got another story here I want to squeeze in here to okay. the end of the show. Cory Booker, everybody's favorite uh, pharmaceutical representative Democrat, <laughs> has uh, – here's what he's done. I'll, you know, you can uh, – we can talk about this. He's introduced a bill – to legalize marijuana in the U.S. at the federal level yeah. and combat the racial injustices surrounding it. And he released a little video talking about it. So let's listen to that just for a minute here, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about it. Sorry that we lost signal before. Um, this is a very important uh, bill I'm about to introduce, uh, but I want to give you a little background first and foremost. We live in a country where we swear this ideal. We put our hand over our heart, and we believe very strongly that we are to be a nation of liberty and justice for all. Well, one way in which we have not fulfilled that promise, that ideal, is through our criminal justice system. And this hasn't been always the case in terms of what we're seeing today in our modern criminal justice system. And what has happened, really, is the so-called war on drugs. Since the 1980s, our federal prison population has gone up 800 percent overall in our country, a 500 percent increase uh, in incarceration. Not only is that taking billions and billions of dollars of our taxpayer money, but we are not seeing the equal application of the criminal justice system. We're not seeing people being arrested uh, in any way that reflect our values. If you think about it for a second, we in this nation uh, have seen the war on drugs. We could actually go to our prisons, go to our jails, and just see who is getting swept up, who is getting incarcerated. One of my great heroes, a guy named Brian Stevenson, says we have a justice system that treats you better if you're rich and guilty than poor and innocent. Well, if you go to our criminal or our jails around this country, you're going to see disproportionately poor people. You're going to see disproportionately people of color. Yeah, and there you go. It's actually a 30-minute video. We don't have time for all that. that? But he's making good points. He's talking, you know, he's talking about the failure of the war on drugs, the absolute Failure. There's no so other way to look trying at it. To, he's trying what? to legalize marijuana, he's, and this is obviously not something he's doing on behalf of the pharmaceutical interest. Right. right. That's you know this is not what. Uh, let me turn my mic down a little bit. Sorry. This is not what um, what Zoloft wants. You know, this is not this is not what uh, his that, top donors want. That phrase though, being arrested according to our values. What exactly are our values anymore? Because the way I look at it, we don't share those values with each other. You know what I mean? We have it's an, a, a it's mean-spirited a, group of people right. that are running the country now. So we, w- when he says our values, what is he saying? Whose values? It, it's it's just a, it was an empty Democrat exactly. platitude. Exactly, it's an empty, empty right. platitude. Right, right, right. There you go. But he does go on to talk about you know it's a thirty-four minute. Well, video, I mean, he's know. right. He talks about how the you know this the war on drugs has affected poor people. It's yeah. affected p- minorities disproportionately. There is lots of data to back that up, and he talks about that. And I'll give credit where it's due. That's excellent. Uh, the only thing I, the only asterisk I put on this is that when he when he uh, refused to support the amendment that um, some Democrats put on in the House um, of a different bill, care. I forget care what for bill me. it was now, but it was an amendment that would let us import drugs from Canada, right, to that get them cheap. Bernie wanted to do is that yeah, Bernie, Bernie wanted to do it. A couple yeah. other Democrats were doing it, and and what and Cory Booker opposed it. And then when people jumped on him on Twitter about it, he said, "Oh well, the safety regulations. I don't know about the safety regulations yeah. in Canada, which yeah. is which is a lie. That's nonsense. He's gaslighting people when he's saying that. What what the Can- Canada's uh, Canada's um, rules 
when it comes to pharmaceuticals are the same as ours. And even if they weren't, there's, let me, there's let no me, one second. Let me there's suggest. no there's no epidemic of people dropping dead in Canada of drugs. But, you know, he knows that. Everyone knows that. He lied. That's a lie, and that was a terrible lie. And then people jumped on him. He lost a lot of credibility with the left. He lost a lot of credibility with his base, which you'll know if you're in New York, you're in New Jersey and all that. So I appreciate this, but it looks to me, and you know it's not going to pass. Trying to save, he's trying to pass. save face. Maybe. So, so, the, so half of me is giving credit where it's due because he, he actually is doing it for the right reasons. He's right. doing it for, not so, you know, so, you know, not to get the stoner vote. He's doing it because <laughs> the, uh, the, war with the, the war on drugs has been a, a complete failure. We've spent a trillion dollars and we're in the exact same situation we were in back when we started it in 1981 Worse. or whatever. Okay, so that's my take on it. I'm half and a half. Yeah, and I think that's fair. That's Dan, fair, Dan. What do you that's think? That's fair. No, I mean, I I think that um, you know, if 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 I had to take you know Cory Booker and accept his position, now I'm in favor of importing drugs from Canada, right? Uh, and I'm in favor of negotiating with the drug companies, uh, you know, to lower our prices. Um, but but you know, if he if the the cost of not doing that is legalizing marijuana, I'd take that in a heartbeat. You know, uh, say that, I think say that, that again. If if the cost yeah. of not importing drugs from Canada and not negotiating drug costs with the drug companies is legalizing marijuana, I would take that deal in a heartbeat. Uh, sure. I don't see why that's a, is that a choice. Well, why do you have to? Make? But, yeah, you but that? why do you have to have one for the other? Though? Well, yeah, you should be able to. Economy. You should be able to have both. But but I mean, you brought you brought up uh, Corey Booker's doing drug it, but, yeah. company. You right, know, right. I mean, and my attitude is okay. So I'll accept Corey Booker's warts. You know, if that's the reward, I mean, that's the difference oh, sure. between you and me and the you, Democratic Party. But, but no, 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 no. See, I would still, I, I, I understand that. I agree with you on that. But that's not a difference that we have. I agree with that. Do we I'm have not, time for a tweet of the week? We do. Uh, <laughs> if you want, we we can go right into. It. We got about a minute left. So let's do. Let's quick okay, do yeah. the tweet of the week. I know. You know, with this this show really should be longer. We always run out of time at yeah. the end. Well, it's just it's just hard to. Um, it's hard because sometimes you can't quite fill two. You know what I mean? Well, there's too many. There's too many issues we want to get into. Right, that's true. Let's get into the uh, Donald Trump tweet of the week, aka the tiny fingered bully report. Our relationship with Russia is at an all time and very dangerous low. Extra space. You can thank Congress, the same people that can't even give us H care. Which I agree with. I think that's you're actually right. It's an interesting. It's an interesting. I argument. agree with them for different reasons. A lot but, of people. Uh, uh, a lot of people pointed out that maybe we could thank Vladimir Putin for invading Crimea. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, that may, maybe that helps. The, so you, you why know, do we care it. about our relationship with Russia? That's Robert, they're the villains. They're Robert, the bad guys. Robert Heading. Yes. R.J. Yes, you're sir. up to something. What is it? Oh yes, FX University is going to be in Charleston, West Virginia this year, September 14th through 18th at my new studio on Washington Street. What is cool. it? What is We're FX also University? The, also on Washington Street. I'm also opening escape rooms there called Out of Time Escape Rooms. I hope you come down cool. and check it out. That what like what is fun. FX University? Give me the elevator pitch. Go. FX University is where we have a weekend boot camp with a bunch of other face-off artists. We're going to teach you all the ins and outs of FX makeup. For one low price, everything included, visit www.rjsfxu for more details. And what's an escape room? .com. What's an escape room? Escape rooms are those fun things where you get locked in for an hour and you have to find all the puzzles and solve all the clues to get out. To get out. They're mm-hmm. all the rage. They're yeah. really catching on. Really Actually, catching on like right a now. Lot of fun to me. Mine are going to be the the mine are very uh, very intricately detailed. You'll have to come and check it out and spend a couple of hours with us. Absolutely. All right. And I want to thank Dan Hyman for being on. I want to you thank uh, Mike Pushkin for coming on at the last minute. Uh, he texted me this morning and was like. Jim Justice this and Jim Justice that. So I was like, all right, we'll just come on the show. Yeah. And uh, I want to thank uh, RJ Heading. Mountain State Up. Thank you, guys. Right. Yeah. Tweet us at Mountain State Up. And make sure you follow us on YouTube this episode and all the previous ones since I started throwing them up there. We'll be on there. And we'll be back next week, Sunday at noon, right here on WTSQ LP. Let's listen to some Rockabilly.